Good morning. You've joined the uh, Daily Post for this 11th day of June. We've got some scriptures and thoughts and ideas that we'd like to share with you. The scripture to begin this morning is from Philippians chapter 4 and verse 13. I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. If you're reading the Bible in a year today, we move into the book of Ezra and chapters 1 and 2 and continuing in the Gospel of John, chapter 19, verses 23 to 42. Some thoughts of the day. There will always be a part, and always a very large part of every community, that have no care but for themselves, and whose care for themselves reaches little further than impatience for immediate pain and eagerness for the nearest good. How true. Maturity begins to grow when you can sense your concern for others outweighing your concern for yourself. Man is distinguished from all other creatures by the faculty of laughter. So, use it. The motivational thought for the day, get excited and enthusiastic about your own dream. This excitement is like a forest fire. You can smell it, you can taste it, and you can see it from a mile away. On this day, in 1184 on this day, in the Trojan War, Troy is sacked and burned according to calculations by Eratosthenes. In 1770, on this day, British explorer Captain James Cook discovered the Great Barrier Reef off Australia. He discovered it by running into it and poking a big hole in the bottom of his boat. In 1901, on this day, Cook Islands were annexed and proclaimed part of New Zealand. In 1959, on this day, Christopher Cockrell first presented the hovercraft. And in 1981, a Richter scale 6.9 magnitude earthquake in Golbaf in Iran killed at least 2,000 people on this day. In 1987, Margaret Thatcher became the first British Prime Minister in 160 years to win a third consecutive term. And in 2021, a US lobster man survived being swallowed by a humpback whale off the coast of Provincetown, Massachusetts. Sounds a little bit like a Bible story to me. The personal story of the day. Bad news? What are you going to do? We often reveal our deepest faith and character by the way we handle bad news. Some will ignore it, hoping that it will go away. Some will react impulsively and make quick judgments. Some will get angry and blame others. Some will go into a depression, saying that the world is against them. Some will face it all alone, thinking that their own strength can overcome anything. And others will pray for God's wisdom, strength, direction and peace. Regardless of our problem-solving methods during adverse situations, we all have one thing in common, the temptation to worry. And worry paralyzes us. Worry confuses the senses and the mind. Worry puts faith in the negative. Worry expects the worst and grows with time. It becomes the proverbial monster under the bed. It is Murphy's Law in action and it is the mountainous molehill. A pilot was trying to fly around the world in record time. Two hours from one of his scheduled stops, however, he heard the familiar sound of rats gnawing away somewhere in the, in the cockpit. And he immediately thought, this is someone gnawing away at my controls. He knew that the rat's sharp teeth could chew through any one of his precious cables or instruments. 
and he began to worry. Would he lose his stabiliser, or maybe the flaps, or oil, or maybe fuel? But he remembered that rats who live on the ground in dark holes can't handle altitude. So he pushed his plane higher and higher, as high as he could fly, until the gnawing stopped. And when he finally landed, a rat, a dead rat, fell out from under the cockpit panel. Be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. So the Apostle Paul tells us in Philippians chapter 4 and verses 6 and 7. And he adds to that in the book of Ephesians, the epistle of, to the Ephesians in chapter 2 and verse 6. And hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Praise the Lord. Some more important thoughts to store away. The devotional thoughts of the day. The first, the master of justice. The scripture is from Isaiah 45 and verse 12. References from Proverbs 20, uh, verse 22 to 21, verse 3. I have made the earth and created man upon it. The story is told about a revengeful man who was recently arrested. This man had been rejected by a graduate school several years earlier. He blamed the professor and for the next few years he called the professor about ten times a night, always during the middle of the night. This account shows how we often take revenge for ourselves rather than trusting in God to bring about justice. One of the major themes in Proverbs is the Lord's sovereignty and letting the Lord avenge is where many people have a hard time trusting God. Whether through human courts or his own final courtroom, the final say belongs to God, for he hates injustice and dishonesty, as we're told in verse 23 of today's scripture. Even though we make choices for which we are responsible, our steps are ultimately directed by the Lord. Perhaps that's why this section contains proverbs about the king, reminding us that even powerful people are under the Lord's sovereign control. The depth of the human heart, including his own and our own, is hard to know. That's the point of verse 24. Only the Lord surely knows our hearts, see verse 27. We can conceal things from others, but we can't conceal them from God. The lamp of the Lord may refer to God's word and his spirit working to show us who we really are and who God is. Some reject this idea of the Lord's sovereign leading because they feel it limits individual freedom. Proverbs indicates that both our choices and God's direction are at work in our lives. We can be grateful for God's gracious intervention that protects us from wrong, such as rash promises. See verse 25. In Proverbs, we see a picture of the ideal king who reveals God's intention for human government. Notice that a wise ruler acts justly. See verse 25, 26, I'm sorry. Like chaff, lawbreakers are separated from those who keep the law. But even a powerful ruler is still under the sovereign control of the Lord. Chapter 21 and verse 1. Indeed, for all humans, only the Lord can truly see the motives of the heart. Verse 2. In the end, the two key qualities of love and faithfulness are what matter to the Lord. Some things in God's word are beyond comprehension. That doesn't mean that we don't wrestle with the reality of human freedom and the complete sovereignty of the Lord. But it does mean that, at a certain level, we just have to accept that these two truths hold together. 
The tension between these truths can comfort us, however. We do our best to discern a course of action through prayer, God's word and wise counsel. Then we trust that God will direct our plans and we step out in faith. Praise him. Wonderful words to bear in mind again. The second thought, misusing our minds. The scripture from Romans 8 and verse 5. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. The Lord gave us a mind to think with, to reason and to apply the knowledge with which he supplied each of us. But sometimes, as humans, we act as though we've lost our mind. We do the strangest things out of character for someone who should be intelligent. We should keep our mind on good thoughts, acting like we are godly people and have the power that God gave us. Instead, we often moan and groan about things not being the way they should be. Yet we don't realise that we are often the reason. We have to want to change, act as though we are changeable and trust in God that he can and will change us. But we can't be double-minded. We have to believe that he can do the things which we want and need changed and not deviate from those thoughts. Satan is smart. He knows where and when to tempt to make the most progress. If you leave open a door, be sure that he's going to put a toe in, and when he does, the whole foot is sure to follow. The way to keep him out is to never give him room to enter. Keep your mind fixed on the Lord and the things that he has supplied in the scripture to keep us out of danger. Don't let Satan get you into his clutches with doubt and disbelief. If he can sway your thinking on one little thing, then he has you under his control. Amen. Take care. One lighter moment today, and it's specifically aimed at the golfers. There's a couple having a, two, two blokes having a round of golf. And uh, as they were approaching the last fairway up to the clubhouse, one of the guys was standing over his tee shot. It's taking forever. He waggled and he looked up and he looked down and he waggled again, but he didn't start his backswing. He was just <laughs> carrying on. Finally, his exasperated partner said, what are you taking so long for? What's going on? And the guy said, my, club, my wife is up there on the balcony watching me from the clubhouse. And he's I want to make the perfect shot. The other guy looked at him and said, Come on, you don't have a snowball's chance in hell of hitting her from here. <laughs> the facts of the day. The 1966 World Cup soccer tournament, when England won on home soil, was the last tournament to feature a ball without any advertising logos. Many parts of a tree can die without killing the whole tree. In fact, much of a normal healthy tree is dead. For example, the wood in the centre of the tree. The closing thought for today. Happy people have more friends. Rejoice in the Lord. Amen. Thanks for joining us today. We hope you'll join us again tomorrow. And in the meantime, we hope the Daily Post will help you through this day. May the Lord bless your day. Bye for now.